Hello, my name is Jerry Spieler, and I'm going to read to you today from the family I have never knew. However, I want to let you know that I'm a member of the San Francisco Peninsula branch of the California Writers Club, and this program, Story Cafe, is in conjunction with the San Mateo County Libraries. My article was initially published in the Doe magazine. The family I never knew. When Grandma Regina died, I stood over her grave, my belly swollen with my son Joshua, who was born the following month. It was 21 years later, in 1992, walking the streets of Warsaw with my son Josh, now a six-foot-tall college boy, and his five-foot-three mother, that Grandma Regina's life took on new meaning for me and for Josh, who never knew her. Grandma Regina Anasevich Bloom was one of eight siblings born and raised in Warsaw, Poland. All my life, I was told by Grandma, in her broken Polish accent, that she lost her entire family in her native Poland in the World War II Holocaust. She escaped by coming to the United States with her son Louis in 1910. Long before the Nazi slaughter, there was a blood bashing initiated by violent Russian pro pogroms throughout the region and at the time when Poland was part of Russia. In the 19th century, when Russia took control of Poland, things started to change for the Jews. During the devastating pogroms of 1906, Grandma was terrified for her life. The horrific massacres, violence, rape, and slaughter of Jews never slowed down in spite of what government officials promised. She begged her family to leave Poland, take her advice, and follow her to the United States. When the Nazis set their sights on the country, they sought to destroy all that was there and build it up again as a colonial homeland for Germans. Regina was a stocky five foot one with dark brown hair and blue eyes and an agitated personality. Grandma, the grandma I knew was short tempered and highly sensitive to anything would appear not to go her way or smelled of anti-Semitism. While my relationship with Regina wasn't close, I admired her for believing in herself and doing what she knew was right for her and taking that action. Leaving everything and everyone she knew to go to a new country far away and learning a new language took a lot of guts, and for that I'm eternally grateful. I was always curious about her roots that were also my roots. Josh had also developed a keen interest in his Eastern European roots and became fascinated with Slavic languages. So, we included Warsaw on the itinerary when Josh had just completed a summer program in Russia, and I joined him there. We traveled to the Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, then Poland. On a lazy morning, after a large breakfast, we visited the Old Town Marketplace, which is one of the oldest parts of Warsaw. As we sauntered down the street, Josh stopped and dug into his backpack. Hey, Mom, I have this address from Grandma Dorothy. It has these names and addresses of some relatives she thinks live in Warsaw. She said she found it in Grandma Regina's stuff after she died. What? When did she give you that? I laughed. Josh, no one is left of her family. The Nazis killed everyone, I said with authority. Well, let's just see if we can find out anyway. We pulled out our city map and plotted our approach. The names on the paper were Janusz and Joseph Anasevich, clearly the same last name as Regina's before she married. These people had been relatives. After wandering around for an hour, we found an apartment building with the same address. When we returned to our hotel later, we asked the concierge if she could find a phone number that matched the name and address. She said the switchboard was closed at night and to come back in the morning. When we returned, I stopped by the desk again and Josh went up to our room. The concierge called and this time someone answered and identified himself as Joseph Anasevich. To be sure it was a relative with that name, I asked the concierge to ask the man if the name Regina Anasevich Bloom meant anything to him. Yes. Does he speak Russian? Of course. Can we come see him? No. Stay at the hotel and he will come to us. I was shocked and excited and trying to stay realistic. This person might still not be a relative of my grandmother's. As we had dinner before we returned to the hotel, we waited in our room for what seemed like forever. But it was only an hour when the concierge called us and said, The man is here. He says to have your son come down with you. 
I held my breath all the way down in the elevator. When the doors opened to the lobby and people were milling about, I scanned the crowd, unsure of who I was looking for. After the crowd thinned, my eyes fell on one person, an elderly man standing by a wall, watching people step out of the elevator. He was someone who I would have recognized anywhere. It was clear he belonged in my family. I smiled, and he just looked back at me. I approached him and said, Are you Joseph? He didn't answer. He just stuck his hand in his pocket and pulled out a small photograph, pointed to the picture, and looked at me. The photo was taken at my cousin Louise's wedding. I pulled Josh close to translate. Tell him that's me, I was pointing, and that's Dorothy, Rose, Josephine, Louis, my cousin Louise, and there's Regina. I told Josh to tell him the photograph was taken at my cousin's wedding many years earlier when Grandma was still alive and apparently she or someone else had mailed it to him. Joseph had his arm around Josh and said to him in Russian, What happened to Regina? The letter stopped 20 years ago. We kept writing but heard nothing back. I was wondering something too. Why had Grandma never told us she was writing to her nephews all those years? Why had she said everyone who died in the war? Like clearly, these two people had survived. Josh was as, amazed, was amazed as I was that this man standing in the hotel lobby was a relative, discovered across thousands of miles, and a survivor of the Holocaust. Joseph had called his daughter, Alexandra Minor, called Ola, to meet him at the hotel as she spoke English. She was a scientist for Procter & Gamble. Ola didn't know about the correspondence, so it never occurred to her to look up relatives in the United States. The four of us spent hours talking about our lives, and I shared what I knew about my grandmother. A couple of days later, Ola invited us to Joseph's home to meet the family members that were in town. As it was summer, many were on vacation. Joseph gathered his younger brother Janusz, Ola's husband and her daughter, as well as close friends, to join together and share stories. I learned that Joseph and his brother Janusz are my mother's first cousins, the sons of one of Grandma's brothers, and the only survivors in the family. Some siblings and relatives fought in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and died there. Again, speaking with Ola's help, Joseph told us he survived the war by serving as a colonel in the Red Army, a common name for the Russian National Military Forces that existed from 1918 to 1946. He was very proud of that service. As Joseph was in the Army, he spoke Russian and some German and jumped between all three languages, sometimes within one sentence. Janusz, who spoke little English, told us he was 12 when the war broke out. He was taken high up into the Ural Mountains to work in a mine, which is how he survived. Today he's an attorney, but not allowed to practice law in the city of Warsaw because he's Jewish. In spite of the tragic stories, the gathering was very warm and welcoming. We sat in Joseph's living room, surrounded by nieces and nephews, brothers and brothers. Josh and I shared about our family and what we knew about Regina and her life. Josh's connection to Polish roots were now a reality for him. It was normal for me to have a European grandmother to identify my lineage, but Josh's grandmother, my mother Dorothy, was a modern woman with a career. My grandma made matzo balls from scratch and her own horseradish. My mother bought her matzo balls and horseradish from Manasevich. While my mother was born in the United States, it was Regina from Warsaw that gave me more of a connection to what happened to European Jews. Josh didn't have that same connection, but his amazement at meeting these distant relatives of his, he said, brought it much closer home for him. While finding these relatives was a gift for me, the real gift for me came from Josh's appreciation and his lineage, his sense of being proud of his heritage. He and I have a new connection that we talk about and share. I've been able to stay connected to Ola. In fact, when she came to New York on business and I was living in Washington, D.C., I flew up and we spent the day together. Another generation that was touched by the Holocaust. It's a family I never knew I had. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this reading and you'll check back and look, look for more readings from the Story Cafe. Thank you.